Welcome to building shape maps in Power BI. Shape maps like the one we see on our screen are geographical maps and they're split into areas and each area has a shade or a colour associated with a particular category. In this case we're looking at the UK election results in 2019. We split the UK into 650 shapes. Each shape is a constituency and we've used the colour of the winning political party. Shape maps can also encode the value of a numerical variable. For example, in this visualization here, we see uh, the local authorities of England and uh, the shading refers to the number of uh, cases of COVID-19 at a particular date in time. Shape maps can also encode a kind of grouped number like we see here. We're looking at a couple of local authorities in South London and we're looking at a kind of socioeconomic number called the IMD, Index of Multiple Deprivation. And we're looking at Croydon and Lambeth and what we can see if we want to click on a, a bar chart underneath it, we can see the areas that are most deprived and the areas that are, are, are least deprived. Enough introduction, let's get started. We're going to show you how to build the perfect shape map with the Power BI shape visual in 10 easy steps. Step one, shape maps need a shape map visual in the palette. Here it is. There are other maps as well. The Bing map, standard bulb map, a field map, and an ArcGIS map. Now, if you don't see the shape map visual, that's because it's a preview feature and we have to go and switch it on. Go to file, Options and settings, options, choose preview features, and the shape map visual is right at the top here. Step two, shape maps need shape files. And our shape map visual has a few inbuilt ones. I've put it onto the canvas. I'm going to take a country um, name and put that onto my location. I'm going to take my cases and put that onto my color saturation. And we get this map of the United States by default, but we can come along and say, actually the shapes I want to use are UK countries. Notice the list of shapes, that's it. There's not that many. And now I've got my first shape map visual. Step three, for the UK, uh, this website in the comments below has got lots of great shape files that we can use. So for example, I'm going to go into the electoral boundaries and go to Westminster Parliamentary Constituencies and get the latest boundaries. This gives me a list of files and I'm going to the file which is uh, the smallest file which is this BUC ultra generalized file. I click on that. That will give me the file and I can download it as a shape file. And that will create a zip file on my folder. I'll just save that. Step four, while we're downloading the shape file, we can also download uh, a spreadsheet file. This is actually a CSV file. And if we open it, it's got lots of useful information, not necessarily for the shape map itself, but if we want to do a corresponding point map, it's got the codes and the names of the Westminster constituencies, and it's got the longitude and latitude to position them. Step five, the shape file that we downloaded from that website of Westminster Parliamentary Constituencies is in a format called ESRI format and that's not the format that we need for um, Power BI, it needs something called TopoJSON. But what we can do is use this wonderful online tool called MapShaper and we can just drag the files onto there, that's the shape files, and then import them. Now let's check the projection of the map. I'm going to click on console here to bring up this window and I'm going to go to Info. And this tells me that the projection is not what I need. Power BI needs a projection of WGS84. So we can change that. We can just type in this command. Proj WGS84. It seems to flatten it. But another info will tell us that we've now got the right projection. If you don't use this projection, uh, your Power BI shape map will look like a child's scribble drawing, so it's, it's really important. Once we've done that, we can come along and export the data, and we're exporting it as a topo.json file. 
Step six is to build our shape. Let's put our shape visual on the canvas. Make it a bit bigger. And we're going to take constituency name from our UK election data. And we're going to take majority and put it on our color saturation. We get a standard US state map. That's not what we need. We click on the formatting pane. We go into shape and we say add a map. And the map that we want to shape is that JSON file of Westminster parliamentary constituencies. And there we have our map. Step seven. Our constituency name, the field in our location field, has got to be have exactly the same values as the map. If we have a look at the map shape, we can see it's got some keys. And there they go. It's got the keys for the name and it's got the keys for the code. We can see that this problem with angle C because it's in grey, if I zoom on it, and we can have a look at the name here. It's got that circumflex accent on the final O. If we have a look at the data, the name hasn't got that and that's why they're different. That's why it's not showing. Fortunately for us, what we can do is go to our field well and use constituency ID because the codes, those standard codes do agree. We can see that now angle C is shaded improperly. We might want to take our constituency name now and put it on the tooltips. So we get a, a good tooltip for that as well. Step eight is that we can change the uh, default uh, formatting of the color scale. What I'm going to do is just choose a different formatting. This doesn't give any indication of my political affiliations. I'm just choosing a different color to the blue. And there we go. We can choose a different color scale. I've chosen a sequential color scale in this case because um, it's the majority. Maybe it would be actually good to make the, the minimum white because that could be zero. And that's probably a better definition distinction. Step nine is to shade in our map in a more controlled way. I've just created a new column in my UK election table. It's called majority margin and I've written a tiny bit of code. What we're doing is creating a column which has four values from low to high, very high, depending on uh, the size of the majority. What I've done as well is I've taken that majority margin and I've put it into my legend. And that gives me over here, it gives me the, the legend. We can see that. And the next thing that I've done is I've gone to my color brewer and I've chosen a palette, again a purple palette, and I've chosen a sequential palette because this is kind of margin of low to high with four classes. And I've taken these four hex codes and I put them into the values for my let me show you them there we go hi if i look at the hex code for that that is the hex code that came out of color brewer so i've cho chosen kind of four colors that should be quite far apart as possible step 10 our colors don't need to represent a number or even a banded number as we've just done what i can do is i can take the party and put it on the legend and what I get is a set of distinct colors, one for each party. Now, these are not the official party colors, but of course what we can do is we can go into the data colors and we can provide the official party colors. There's a lot more to be said about mapping and we'll come back to it in future sessions. So for example, the screen here shows uh, the same IMD data as we saw before, but not just for a couple of boroughs in South London, for most of South London. And we're using a different sort of visual, not the shape map visual, but a map box visual, one of the custom visuals in Power BI. So we'll come back and look at that in detail in future sessions. I hope to see you then. Bye.